looked at him with the same kind of looks. What? This it, it says that in Psalms, but it's a small G. What does it mean? It's, it's an approach. We should have a God in nature. Let me ask you a question. When you become a Christian and you're born again, are you adopted into the family of God? Yes. Is God God? Yes. Do you become a child of God? Yes. Doesn't it say in your law that you are God's? Yeah. Listen, what does that mean? See, it, it shook them up as well. <clears throat> are you a child of God? Yes. Do you not take on the characteristics of your family? Isn't that what Jesus came and died to live inside of you so that you can take on the characteristics of your new family? Right? Now, how many of you guys lived a life that was far away from what Jesus wanted before you came to him? Anybody? When you came to him, did you change anything? Everything. Why? Did you change because you wanted to please him? Did you change because you wanted him to accept you? Or did you change because you started to know him and he started to live out his life Amen. in and through all things we come to? Okay? Think of these things. Okay, so verse 23 of chapter 14. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Why does Jesus keep referring that what he's saying is not his own works? He, he said that I have the power to lay down my life, and I have the power to take it back up. And he said that this isn't my words, but these are the commands that I receive from my Father. Why does he keep saying that? So you know it's not just from a man, but from God. So that you know that it's not just from a man, that these are the words of God, the Father, and that he's in constant communion with his Father, right? You ever think of how was Jesus able to live on this, this earth for three decades and never sin? in thought, word, or deed. I asked people that question and said, he was God. Daily communication he, couldn't, he couldn't sin. Constant communication with his father, right? He, he met with his father and got every uh, his whole marching order for the day. And he, he, and he, not, he didn't just leave that. He stayed with his father all day long. Jesus overcame because when he was born from Mary, he was born, born again. You guys understand that? Yes. Right? He was born, born again. Amen. What that means is when you're born again, now you have everything that Jesus had Amen. at your disposal. Do you remember him saying that he couldn't do many miracles in this town because he didn't have faith? Could he not do the miracles? Yeah. In and of himself. Yeah. In and of himself, though, he could not. Yeah. He could not. The people did not have the faith. And so nothing great happened there. But when they had faith, great things happened. Yeah. Same thing happens in our life today. Listen, you can be a strong Christian, you can be a mature Christian, or you can be a baby Christian. And you can be a baby Christian all your life. It all depends on just how much you want to grow and how strong you allow your faith to become in Him. Okay? That choice is yours. And what you do with your relationship with Him is the choices you make every day. Amen. When you come to Him, you, yes, Jim? <clears throat> Enoch was the prime example of that. He walked with God, and when it was time to take Enoch, he didn't see death. God never wanted to be separated from Enoch because of the relationship that he had with him. Hmm. Wouldn't you like to be like Enoch? Yeah. Okay, so again, um, we will come to him and make our home with him. Verse 27, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be what? Troubled. Neither let it be afraid. afraid. 
In this life, the older you get and the more you experience, there are going to be troubles and there are going to be fears. And depending on how you handle them is going to depend on who you know. Right? I meet a lot of Christians who fear and anxiety just eats up their entire life. They're afraid of everything. Jesus made it plain. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Listen, Jesus is bigger than anything that the devil can throw at you. Jesus is bigger than any problem this world can give to you. Doesn't mean that Jesus is going to promise that your life is going to be easy and smooth. Because actually he said it won't be. He said that you're going to have trials and persecutions and you will know pain. But you will grow in that pain. And you will grow in those trials. And you will grow closer to him. And your faith in him will become stronger and stronger. And you will get to the point where you know that nothing, nothing that happens in this life can ever separate me. All right, let's look at just a couple more, and then I'll close. Why well, didn't get an amen for that? <laughs> Turn to John 15. Let's look at verse 5 through 13. Verse 5 says, again, Jesus is speaking, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, does what? Bears, Bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is, with or, and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. But verse 7, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you what? Desire. desire. You will ask what you desire, and it will be given to you. Well, listen, I desire $100,000 in my bank account, and I haven't seen that yet. That's the wrong desire, right? Right. What I desire is when I came to give my heart fully to Jesus Christ, I wanted to be used by Him in whatever way He wanted. And when I realized what my gifts and my talents were, and that was in the areas of teaching and preaching, I pray that if you open the door, I will go and do whatever you want me to do. That was the desire of my heart. And did God grant that? Yes. The answer is yes. Whatever you ask, if it's according to His will, He will give you the desires of your hearts. I'm looking for where I was. <coughs> Chapter 15, verse what? Verse 8. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. If we're Jesus' disciples, what will we do? Learn from Him. We will bear much fruit, right? Amen. So listen, if your life isn't bearing any fruit for the kingdom, for God Himself, you really need to look at your relationship with Him. Because you can't have one without the other. If you're a branch connected to His vine, you will bear fruit. Yeah. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And Jesus said, maybe 30-fold, maybe 60-fold, maybe 100-fold. But you will bear fruit. If you're bearing no fruit, you need to do some self-reflection. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be what? Oh. Here you go. Verse 12. How do you have that joy full? This is my commandment. That you what? Love, love one another yes. as I have loved you. This is why, again, the entire law can be boiled down to this one thing and that is love. If you love through Christ, that's agape love. It's not a selfish love. You see, I heard somebody's going, I thought he said he was going to close. <laughs> <laughs> I will close after this, I promise. 
Jim. Well, you guys keep talking. One quick so word we need to talk this off with. That's charity. And that, okay. You just mentioned that a few minutes ago, but you didn't use the word. Mm -hmm. You know, there has to be something that's put forward. We can tell everybody we love them, but if they have a need and we have the means to fulfill that need, we need to help. Them. That's one of the uh, one of the limitations of language in America. I can love that piano the same way I love my brother Pat. Same words, not the same way. In fact, I could love chocolate cake and say I love my wife. Okay, but. Before I was a Christian, I knew love more in a manipulative, selfish way. I could get love through manipulation. I could get love through selfishness. You understand? I could give love through selfishness. But what I found in Christ is real, true, authentic love that loves me for who I am, where I am, and what I am and a love that will never go away, okay? This is what he calls for us to do. When he says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another, that's the kind of love he's talking about. Not a love based on condition, but a love that knows no condition. It has no condition, but is always there. In the Old Testament, God said, I love you, and I'm coming to you. In the New Testament, God says, I love you. I have come to you. You can heap all of your hatred. You can heap all of your pain. You can heap all of your disgust on me, and that will never change my love for you. I will go to the cross, and I will die for you so that you can be with me for eternity. That is the death of God's love. Amen. Right. We're not capable of that love without you. Amen. 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 Closing him this morning. See, I told you I get that. Hymn number 216.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming into this house of worship to glorify you, to thank you, to praise you, for truly you are worthy. Father, I pray that as we depart from here, that we will understand more and more as the days go by the depth of your love for us. Father, help us to understand it ourselves so that we may share this love with others. Help us to share this good news of Jesus Christ and the gospel of salvation that is found in Him. Father, I pray that you will strengthen us, that you will convert us, and that you will use us according to your wisdom and glory. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.